for this kind of introduction. I will start with my time. I will start with five minutes. First thing, I am very happy to be here. Honestly, and this is the pride that you have reached the 20th. I will talk about that. I am very happy to be here. 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 بعد الله يعني لو وصلت لأي حاجة علم فهو ذو فضل على راسي من فوق لا ننساه أبدا مع أستاذين من التانيين. دكتور أسامة الشحات أنا بسمع سمعت فقلت 2009 إمكانياتهم بسيطة لا 2009 كانوا أوريدي عملوا على الأقل 8 أو 9 مؤتمرات كم كلية عملت؟ أيوه يعني ذيس إز وبعدين إمكانيات حاجة تانية إمكانيات عندهم اخلاص ويجمعكم على قلب رجل واحد. في نقطة أساسية معلش لازم أذكرها. شخص إنسان عزيز عليا وقف هنا من أربع ساعات اتكلم عن أحسن حاجة حلوة وهي فعلا دكتورة نيفين. بس يا دكتور عادل عطار ده منهور وأنا أدين لك بالفخر إنك عملت هذا لأنك أنت شخصية غير طبيعية في مصر. صراحة أنا أعتقد إن هو اللي أنا قلتها قبل كده. فكرة المؤتمر أنا بس هضطر أقول كلمة من 2000 أو 2001 كنت مشترك مع الدكتور زغلول والدكتور عماد عبد الفتاح ربنا يجيبهم السلامة ففتحوا حكاية المؤتمر فحتى كان ردي أنا حضرت يمكن 20 مؤتمر أعتقد هذا ربنا بس عجزنا 20 سنة بس قلت لهم لازم تعملوا حاجة أنتم مش هت هتنافسوا ليه سنتين. اعملوا زي ما في واحده زميلتنا قالت هنا بعد الانتروداكشن قالت لشباب الاطباء عشان حد يطلع من هنا ينفذ الكلام اللي يتقال. و لكم ان تفخروا انكم منكم احسن من كليه الطب في وجهه نظري اكيد يعني. التوبيك اوف توداي از اباوت ابديتنج جلوبال نفرايتس اند يو ويل فايند ذات هاف ميبي 30 مينتس But guidelines are only guide to line. You must respect, fully adapt to be safe, but actually not necessarily to be safe your patient, like the patient which you already saw, and it is changeable. And you can divert if you can stand the trial, trial in front of a court, and you must assume you enough. When it is a must, and we are trying to speak about the wisdom in management of glomerular disease and look to the guideline and maybe Egyptian part of it. معلش أنا برضو كل الناس كلموا عن الناس عزاء عليا بس أنا ليا وجهة نظر مختلفة شوية. دكتور حسين والدكتور عمرو إحنا فقدناهم في آخر كم شهر. أه بس أنا هقول حاجة بارقة أمل، أما يبقى الناس كلها مجمعين على شخص ما إن هو كويس فعلامة كويسة، هقول لك سر تاني جزء من مرضى الدكتور عمرو عبيد بيجولي الدكتور عمرو مشهور قال إن هو رحمة الله عليه من بيعامل الناس وحش وبتاع، والله العظيم ما في واحد بزرزره وأقول له يقول لي لا، يعني لدرجة إن هو لو الدكتور عمرو موجود هيسيبني ويروح يعني رحمة الله عليهم بس أنا بصيت للقصة دي بحاجة تانية حاجة فعلا إن إحنا كلنا ميتون وكلنا محاسبون ولكن كلنا لازم نكون عابدون عاملون لأننا مسؤولون وموقوفون مش عارف ممكن أنزل من الستين ده ولا لأ لأن الموت يأتي بختة لأنه لا إله إلا الله آه هعدي الحتة دي ونتكلم على الأجندة بتاعت النهاردة. Uh, primary glomerular disease including many things but actually because of the time span I will speak about new guideline or whatever guideline in C3 glomerulopathy because it is a special request and IgE nephropathy and members actually. And uh, I prepare this as a big lecture so I did this and double hit but I only will emphasize on the treatment. And if the chairperson allow me within my time, 
هو اتحط لي 15 دقيقه انا ليا نص ساعه بس يعني الناس اخذوا ساعات اللي تغمر بيها يعني ماشي يعني ما تعطيش 17 دقيقه حاضر انا ما عنديش مشكله على فكره ماشي بس الصراحه انا نفسي اقدم الهوت كيس لان انا اي هاف بروبلم ويز ات اي ديد ان سولف ات وانا هاخد التشانس ان الناس موجوده وهتبقى انتر اكتف بس حسب الوقت بقى Uh, we must maintain the balance by doing management between in uh, in the stage when I'm in infections that Professor Mahas has mentioned. I will start by debatable conclusions so as if the time at least the message we give. 24 hour urine collection for protein is the gold standard. They cannot be replaced by protein creatinine ratio or album. They are debatable conclusions. You will argue about this statement 100%, but it appeared in the KI last year. Combination not only ACE or ARMS, but plus aldosterone antagonist can be used to control proteinuria in kidney patient and can be safe, and I will give the reference. But they think about six day instruction to be given to such patient if he is in dehydrated or so. SHL2 inhibitor may be an antiproteinuric agent. IgA nephropathy cannot be diagnosed without a kidney biopsy, of course. Primary, whatever, idiopathic membranes nephropathy with a normal kidney function and positive antiperitoire antibody can be treated or must be treated without doing a biopsy. And this is a debate a few months ago. For IgA nephropathy, only supportive and salt, RAS inhibitor or blocker, then maybe, and maybe, a bit maybe corticosteroids, and a crescentic or ethnic will differ. For primary membranous, immunosuppression not routinely required. There is a difference between risk and resistance and progression or relapse of membranous. So besides steroid, you have three weapons. The cyclophosphamide, rituximab, and C9. And believe it or not, they interchangeable. There is no rule. If you start by one, you can shift to another one. I prepared this case so as I'm, I'm making a debatable conclusion. So if I'm speaking about IgA, it is mainly supportive and rest blockade. Fish oil actually not on the market. Corticosteroid only with caution and immunosuppression treatment if used, it has an unlimited effect in a low G form. Corticosteroid can slow the creatinine or slow the uh, progression in both more or less 50 mal G form. But immunosuppressive, if it uses it, it may have an impact in low and the guideline actually mention it away. The cyclophosphamide, the ASA, and the MMF all are more or less not to be used. Tonsillectomy used in Japanese in recurrent tonsillitis. Rutoximab and tacrolimus not be used. This is the summary of how to treat IgG nephropathy. If you go to the C3 glomerulopathy, it is only MMF. And if it is not respond, the approach, they shift the patient to what we call enter in a clinical trial without documented proof because there is no treatment. And uh, I'll skip this because of the time. And then the membranes. Definitely no routine immunosuppression and full supportive treatment and still the RAS. But if it is resistant or progression or risk or relapse, you may think, beside the corticosteroid, the three weapon rituximab, cyclophosphamide, C9, and all are equivalent and all are interchangeable. And I, I intended actually to fill this table, but I just give you the remark of what I was thinking about doing it. Anyway, um, so the base of this uh, presentation coming from two things. This is the management treatment of glomerular disease part one in the KI 2019. And actually it was the base of the guideline published 
in June 2020 by the Keiduki, but actually if you go to the website, they didn't put it yet because it is for public review. And I, this, a lot of persons, and I was astonished that Glasser had the appendix and not in the main because he is the father's. The conclusion of part one is why all the problem of assessing kidney function and kidney disease activity in proteinuria still uh, we don't agree. The main progress was in the pathogenesis and the surrogate marking. The part two in the same KI is speaking about different. And this actually the main guideline which I don't intend to go through as you see a lot of uh, about maybe 400 pages and different others. So what about introduction? They speak about kidney biopsy. I will not go through this, but about proteinuria. The most glomerular diseases are associated with significant proteinuria, and they mention, although the ratio of LACR and VCR is good, it is not a good, if you want to assess it, assess by 24-hour urine. Although the spot urine may be helpful, but this is not the rule, except maybe in children. And in young children, obtaining 24 hours is uh, difficult. And they mentioned something about serum albumin levels, but actually, is, uh, to me at least, it is a, a late marker. And this actually what they said. The main approach is through RAS blockade, an area of controversy is whether ACE inhibitor or ARPS should be used alone or a dual therapy and or in combination with an aldosterone antagonist. If I mention this in a cardiology meeting, they was killing me about three years ago. But actually this is published. Previously, hyperkalemia and AKI is outpaying the benefit of dual, but recent studies indicate that with therefore monitoring, combination can be safe. But actually, the guideline didn't take this in 2020. I will get through this. Nevertheless, the benefit with a high-grade proteinuria is not clear still. And they put something which, to me, is the first time to hear about it. A sick day instruction. If you do that, if the patient, even with only ACE inhibitor, you give him a sick day instruction. If he is dehydrated, have a diarrhea or something like that, it's better not to take the drug and the aldosterone. And this is actually the actual snapshot from the paper. Uh, they speak about SGL2 inhibitor as uh, only for treatment of proteinuria. So what about IgA? A lot of interactions and every stop which treatment is, but significant controversy of a steroid in IgA, the supportive versus immunosuppressive treatment, and actually immunosuppressant transitly reduced proteinuria over three years and had no impact on estimated GFR. And proteinuria reduction occurred mostly in the steroid but not in immunosuppression, Optimized supportive treatment was associated actually with the slow in progression. And this is in testing trials. The significant reduction in the risk of 40% decline if you use steroid in the IgA and the kidney function loss in the control group was four times faster than the steroid part. So the steroid may help. And the immunosuppression does not help. And if it do, it will be in the lower EHG form. And future guideline is important to speak about this. And actually, MMF is not effective in, in, uh, in IgA nephropathy, but actually there is two studies conflicting because the ethnic is different. Caucasian stopped early prematurely because it's not effective, but the Japanese, uh, the Chinese, randomized has got an effect. One year have got fewer steroid side effects if combined with MMF. So the ethnic will have a role in this. Future studies actually including different other things. What about tonsillectomy? It is actually remains a controversy. The only country using it routinely is Japanese. 
And actually, this is done in the uh, guideline which I will mention. The European, European cohort of tonsillectomy does not support using tonsillectomy as a routine. And there is a difference between Caucasian and Asian about different med medication. Future studies, I must emphasize that rutuximab and tacrolimus never to be used in IgA nephropathy because they do not have any impact. There is a lot of others which is not used in Egypt, that's why I will just put them. This paper in 2019, they took the, the table of 2012 of the k Duki guideline and they mark if they need to change. Look to this. Initial evaluation of the risk of progression, I speak about IgA, it must be changed. And the corticosteroid as a treatment must be changed. But the immunosuppression is not changed and we suggest not using MMF in IgA. And actually this, this was, must uh, maybe changed in ethnic. So if you go to the chapter of IgE nephropathy in the KDUGI, they must think about uh, considering the patient if it is IgE vasculitis or IgE in a pregnancy because they may differ. And consider of other risk factor, but the crucial thing in IgE nephropathy is the blood pressure monitoring and the lifestyle before and then the rest before giving any immune suppression. The guideline in 2020 didn't take, of course, the recommendation of using ACE or ACE because they said, but not both, loud and pre. So if you adapt the guideline, you must not use ACE or ACE, even in IgA, the professor Fugier in, uh, in uh, Germany kept, was using this in one of his paper, but not to be used in combination. If you follow the guideline, that's what they said. Uh, the guideline for treatment of IgA in summary, the primary focus of management should be optimized supportive care, dietary sodium restriction, not other foods, and they must consider the variant of different IgA. And either ACE or us must be used, and you must compare between the risk benefit between using immunosuppression in such patient, and if it is below 50, you may be reluctant to use any, or even corticosteroids. Proteinuria reduction to under uh, one gram, you may use a steroid if the rest blockade and the supportive is not working. The most important, this table, is the corticosteroid must not be used in this particular situation in IgA, if the estimated GFR is less than 30, the patient has got diabetes, has got obesity, has got latent infection, secondary disease, active peptic ulcer, or psychiatric illness. Sorry. Um, and they must be relatively contraindicated in different other things. And you must think about, follow the proteinuria and see the response of the... This is an important table because it appears in the guideline of IgE. The things which were thinking about giving fish oil, omega-3 and whatsoever. Second column, not recommended at all to use antiplatelet, anticoagulant, uh, cyclophosphamide, as a cyprine, and CNI, rotoximab, fish oil, all this is not effective in IgE uniform. And the tonsillectomy should not be performed as a treatment of IgE except in certain ethnic special population with a nephrotic syndrome, it has the same treatment as non-nephrotic. The IgA with AKI, the most important is to discriminate between IgA due to uh, AKI due to IgA or a concomitant IgA. And IgA is rapidly progressive and in this situation you may think of using cyclophosphamide and corticosteroids. And with pregnancy planning, the most emphasized thing is you must have a counseling with the preconception counseling to 
to say to the patient that he may take treatment will affect his pregnancy. I'm not speaking about these two things. One phrase about C3 glomerulopathy, and maybe I will escape the members just uh, because I need the case anyway. So the C3 glomerulopathy, you must differentiate between different things. Immunoglobulin and complete mediated, which is C3, MBGN with another immune, and idiopathic form of membranous. And about C3, the guideline is very simple. Using MMF, and if not affected, you must, uh, uh, if not affected, uh, this will, uh, uh, you will put him in a clinical trial, actually they put in the guideline inclusiveness, but actually if not affected, you must put him in a clinical trial. What about membranes deformity? Primary membranes, the anti-PL2 antibody can predict the onset, remission and relapse of primary membranes. The presence of it, of a newly diagnosed, exclude malignant related membranes. Anti-PL2 antibody specificity is 78, sensitivity is 99. To diagnose membranes, you must have a circulating, although we send once the tissue, and hyper-expression on the G, and subclass G4, and negative C1Q in the G. This is a, a good slide, I borrow it from Professor Glasser. They show that anti-PL2 antibody can decline before the clinical remission, even of proteinuria, and even before partial remission. So, it can be used if you are diagnosing primary idiopathic membranes as a, a marker to decide when to start to decrease your treatment before the proteinuria. The concept about doing a biopsy or not coming from the moderator commentary of Glasser and mentioned simply if it is a normal GFR, anti pl antibody is positive and not diabetic, you, and there is blood urine acidment, there is no need to do a kidney biopsy. And what about the membranes in the guideline? They said that the same as Professor Glasser. Uh, uh, I'm up here, Professor. Please, sir. Yes. I end up saying, all right. Hey. I don't know if you mean, I'm a chef. 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 I'm a ch
تقول مين؟ دكتور وليد وليد اتفضل ايوه دكتور وليد معلش جت فيك يا احنا مش سامعين عشان صوتك معلش اصل الحاله دي مهمه بالنسبه لي الايس اول حاجه هو جميل وقفنا الايس وبعدين؟ وتقولها تعالي بعد كذا يوم في اي تشينج في البانل؟ حلوه دي هرجع لها تاني وبس انا عملتها هقول لك حاضر لوكاس مارك طيب الست دي فور وات ايفر ريزون اي ثينك وي هاف تو اوميت الانتراكشن انتراكشن وي ار ريلي شورت اوف تايم حاضر يا حاضر خلاص حاضر حضرتك باختصار ذيس بيشن اكشولي فور وات ايفر ريزون اي ديسايد شي ماست ادميت ات رايت اواي ان ذا تو ذا هوسبيتال And actually, the second day was admitted to the hospital. Creatinine going up to 2.96, urea 93, LFT is normal, urine output around 3 liter, and the chest has got a chest pain, but ECG normal, but her FTP and uh, double stranded uh, or D-dimer was high, and saturation was 93. ABG was not done. On the assumption she may have showers, She was put on Kilexan, corticosteroid uh, methyl bread was 250 twice daily and prepared for biopsy. We are not waiting for biopsy. So we did the CBC. The CBC show hemoglobin 9.5 but the plate did 25. And all the PT, PTT, INR was normal and she has more or less some neurological symptom considered psychological or organic. So, We, we discontinue the Plexan and repeat the CBC next day and the blood film show it is dropped again to 13, the plates. This is actual number. And actually dropping day by day. The blood film did not show uh, that she has a microangiopathic hemolytic anemia, but the hemoglobin dropped from 9 to 7, creatinine going up when milligram per day to be 3.8 urea 114 and she was on insulin but the urine never stopped urine is 3000 3 liter and the urine lab is no abnormal data not even anything and the trace of albumin and the SO2 because of this continue the Clexan has got a hypoxia because she is off anticoagulant Uh, heparin was uh, going again for the fake of, I would just stop this one because I need the uh, opinion from the expert. This only one stops it. The boy can't renew the opinion until the end. Now, I have to tell you. 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 Right. Dr. Magdi, this was a pushing to do a plasma pharesis on the assumption of TTV. All right. That's that's the case. Actually, that's the case. The marriage and her heart. And I'm just half telling you. I have to deny. The Nadi had. The platelet is still 13, but always the clotting and eye are normal. Creatinine keeping up for four. Who was planning to do biopsy? Urea 161, and actually we give uh, platelet transfusion. Uh, uh, and at that time, because of the cost, we think about TTP, but we did a plasmic score has got five with the intermediate supporting what Professor Sharawi wants to do plasma pharesis. ANA, C3, ANCA, ADAM, 13, and name it. And what about the results? We delay the biopsy because although she has got 76, for the first time, the creatinine going plateau and urea still going up. Urine, 7,000. And the patient is risky and the patient is not waiting for complication, so we delay the biopsy. And then on Wednesday, the platelet going from 76 to 50 again and dropped Uh, hemoglobin from 8.1 to 7.6, creatinine for the first time dropped to 4 with steroid alone. The urine output never stopped. And actually, on the eighth day, the platelet going after 
two units of packed out, uh, 24 units of platelets going to 112, uh, and creatinine keeping to three. Urine output negative. All the immunology negative. The cooms are negative. The haptoglobin is a little bit less. This is going with, uh, and the reticulocytic count is normal, so this is not microangiopathic hemolytic anemia. And ADAM 13 is outstanding. And we did a biopsy and we got uh, preliminary results, but not now. The platelet dropped quickly after the biopsy without hematoma to again 49. Creatinine keeping going down to 3.5, urine output never stopped, the patient was in heparin, and no plasma actually change done. Because at that time, the Adam, uh, I wasn't convinced that she needed plasma exchange. TS13 was 1800. This means that more than 100. So it is against TTP. The creatinine keeping down, one back depleted, and the decision to be discharged. And if she needs hospital again, and the key issue of this, the PCR was not, actually this was ordered from day one, was 9,000 despite the acting creatinine ratio is only 100, but serum and protein electrophoresis delayed to be done on the 10th day because of the cost, we think I'm doing biopsy, but the serum electrophoresis was completely normal, the alpha 2 is a little bit down, the two cores of the biopsy by preliminary, but I don't have picture. One is medulla, but four glomeruli, but completely normal. I ask it the pathologist many times. It is not TMA, not TTB, not capillary thrombosis. And the main pathology is tubular, mainly acute tubular necrosis with dystrophic calcification, but the calcium is 8.4. And only one cast, one tubule. And things to be done, waiting for the urine, get to freeze it, two immune exams for light chain, measure the kappa and lambda, waiting for EM, and the working diagnosis may be monoclonal capopathy uh, of renal significant light change, concomitant disease, or drug causing thrombocytopenia. But against the drugs, the plexan or heparin, they are not the same, and there is acute dropping of uh, platelets. The ATN without oliguria is very difficult and maybe com re receives corticosteroids. I have only one question, but again it's all what I have said. Rapid AKI, rapid response only to steroid. Why not only thrombocytopenia, but mostly consumption? She is not thrombocytopenic, she is going down. And do not trust the plasmic score because otherwise we will do plasma exchange for this patient without definitive diagnosis. I have only one question apart from whatever discussion. If this patient, to Professor Walid Masoud, if this patient come to you, she was discharged on Sunday, this Sunday. If she come to you by platelet 30 thousand, what are you going to do? The creatinine, actually, the latest is 2.5. I think Robert Sah is not the other one. But what did you do? I finished actually the, the last slide, is thank you. But uh, uh, do we have any input? Well, I don't think we have any input. Let's go first. With Adam, is. is Adam definitely against you. Activity or activity? Activity is more than one. Now. Now. Activity is more than one. 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 Now. Thank you very much, Professor Adam. I'm sorry, Allah. Hope for a second. And I have a